Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to continue where we left off in the last tutorial in designing our sheet metal box assembly. So at this point, uh, what we want to do is add a couple features to our metal box. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to edit the sheet metal box in the context of the assembly. And so the first thing to do is to click on the box and right click and come over here to where it says edit part. When you click on that button, you're going to see that the metal box part in the feature manager tree turns blue. You can click on the plus sign and you're going to see that all the features and text is blue as well. That means that we're editing the part. So I'm going to come over here, look at it from the front, and I'm going to start a sketch here, sketch one, under our base flange. If you remember, this was a sketch that we used to create the base flange in the beginning. So I'm going to edit this sketch and I'm going to create a center line between the origin and this top line. I'm going to connect them. And once that's connected, I can come over here and create a circle. Place the circle down. And I'm going to set a dimension here for the circle to be, let's say, point, um, point 0.75. So now we have a three quarter inch circle and I'm going to bring out a center point straight slot and I'm going to come over here and select straight slot and with that selected I'm going to click on the um, center of the circle. I'm going to drag up and I'm going to place my slot. I'm going to set a dimension now between these two lines which I want to be a half inch. So now you can see I've created the shape that I want. Um, I'm actually going to uh, dial this up a little bit to one inch. And with that done, I can now come over to Trim Entities and I can trim a couple of these uh, lines I don't want. So I'm just going to trim this line, this line, this arc. And I'm also going to trim these two lines. And so in the perfect world, we want to fully constrain our sketch. So to do that, um, we have to add a couple more dimensions. Um, the center between here and here is one of them. Uh, we just want to make sure that our sketch doesn't have a, a bunch of things that, that are going to change um, when, when we move it around or when we drag it. So let's make sure that we make these two tangent to each other. We make this line and this line tangent. And for right now, uh, we're, we're going to leave it at that for this example. So here's my sketch. It's not fully defined, but um, we're going to leave it like this and we're going to go to linear sketch pattern here at the top and if you click on linear sketch pattern you can go down to entities to pattern and select the entities that make up our slot and so you can see in the preview that it's trying to create this linear pattern in this direction but that's not the direction that we want you know, you could actually see I could change the value, but uh, we don't want it in this direction. So what I'm going to do is change the angle. See, I could change the angle to be 90 degrees. And that's going to change the direction that our pattern goes in. So I'm going to dial this up to, let's say, 70 degrees. And I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see that we now have two uh, sketches. So if I exit my sketch, you're going to see that it updates accordingly. And so what these are, are these are uh, slots for a screw and washer or a bolt and washer to create a bolted connection in order to attach our box to a wall. So I can if I'd like to, I can come back and I can uh, bring these down a little bit. Maybe I want to place 
the first one right on the origin so that it's in the center. Um, I can also click on the line and just make it vertical. That way it can't move um, the way that it was shifting before. And so that's going to be our first uh, feature that we've done. And as you could see, this was very simple because within the context of a base flange sketch, which is how we first created the part in the part one video, we can just create a closed shape. And as long as we create a closed shape on this sketch, it's always going to update fully. So if this sketch was not closed, the whole, the whole feature would fail because it wouldn't understand uh, what it wants our extrusion to be. So that being said, um, we're going to continue with adding a couple more things to this. Now, we're still in the context of the assembly, and that's fine. We want to edit in context of the assembly. And the next thing we want to do is we want to come over here to the right side, and we want to click on Design Library. And when you click on Design Library, a couple of options are going to pop up. Now, you want to come up here to Design Library. You don't want to click on Toolbox or, or anything else uh, for right now. Come down to Forming Tools, and you're going to see this thing, the louvers, pop up. So double click on that. And you can move this louver over to the side of the part. And when you do that, you're going to see that it it gives you a sort of preview of what it's going to look like. And, and so for those who aren't familiar with what this is, uh, this forming feature is kind of like a, a pre-made tool that SolidWorks has in its library within what we call the design library. And it's a pre-made sort of bend that you can just apply to any part that you have. So this came in when I place it on the surface the wrong way. I can click 90 degrees and you're going to see it's going to come to the side. But what we really want to do is we want to flip it. So I'm going to click on flip tool and that's going to flip our tool to the other side. I'm going to see this is actually in, in not in the direction I want. So I need to type in 180 into rotation angle and you're going to see that it updates the way that we want it to. Uh, this is how we want our part to look. And so from here, um, I kind of placed it randomly on this surface, but you can position this uh, depending on exactly where you want it. But we're going to hit OK for right now. And so if I click over here where it says the louver that we created, if I click on the uh, plus sign to the left of it, you can actually go into the sketch or the two sketches that, that make it, that actually um, create the feature. So I can click on Sketch 13, right click and hit Edit Sketch, and I can change the line that it's made of. So I can, I can for instance, select this line and hit Convert Entities and now this line is converted. Now I could bring the point of this line and click on it and I can set these to be um, at midpoint with each other. So they're coincident now to the midpoint. I could also drag that line downward if I'd like to. And I can, I can set it to be at a point here as well. So I can click on this line and I can hit Convert Entities and I can make them center points as well. And so if I exit the sketch you're gonna see that now my feature is all the way at the top because that's where we placed it. But that's not what we want. We want it to be somewhere in the center. So I need to come back to my Sketch 13 and I'm gonna click on this point and I'm going to remove these uh, constraints so that it's not placed here at the top anymore. And now I can drag it back down. And when you drag it back down and exit the sketch, you're going to see that it updates accordingly. 
So for right now, we just wanna dimension the location of our first feature. And you're gonna see why in a second. So if I click on this line, I can come down here and see that it's 461 millimeters. Knowing that, I can click on my line and I can set a dimension to be, let's say, 400 millimeters. I'm sorry, uh, that's 400 millimeters and hit OK. And you're gonna see that it places it around here. So when we exit, our feature is created here at this point. So that's where we want our first feature to be. Here, what I wanna do is pattern our feature. So I'm going to come over here to features and I'm gonna create a linear pattern and I'm gonna click on the louver And when I click on the louver, I can also set a direction for my pattern. So I'm gonna click on this point, on, on this line here. And I'm gonna set this to be um, a pattern in this direction, going downward. And I'm going to up the uh, spacing. And when I up the spacing, you're, you're gonna see that I'm, I'm getting a pattern now of the louver. So we can decide to have uh, five of these, six of these, seven of these, however many you want. We're gonna space them out a little bit. And when we hit okay, we're gonna see that our feature is now active on the part. And if I want, I can also mirror. So I can come up here to mirror under the features tab, same place. This is linear pattern, this is mirror, so I can click on it. And for my mirror face and plane, we have to be careful. I need to come down to metal box and I need to click on the right plane for the metal box, not for the part. The parts planes are over here, but we want here where it's in blue, where we're editing, we wanna click on the right plane. And that is the correct plane that we wanna use. So if I hit okay, you're gonna see that the feature updates accordingly. So that being said, uh, we've added a couple louvers and some holes within the base flange to our main metal box part. So from here, you're gonna see that everything else, all our other components are shown transparent. I'm gonna come up here to the top right and click on this uh, exit button to go back. And you're gonna see that we're now not editing the part in the context of the assembly anymore. We're now editing the entire assembly. We're now back in our assembly. So what I could do from here is create uh, one more addition that we wanna do. And that's gonna be to the front face panel. So I'm gonna click on the panel, right click, edit part, same way we did for the box. And from here, I want to edit here where it says door, because that's the part we're editing. We're gonna come down here to base flange one, click on sketch and edit the sketch. We're now editing the main sketch, as you can see. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and place a circle and I want this circle to be three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna place it down, click on it again, set a dimension, three quarters of an inch. And I'm gonna set a dimension from the center of the circle to the origin. Or I'm sorry, I want, I would rather control my sketch not from the origin but actually from the end face here. So I'm gonna set a dimension from the line here to the center of the circle. And hopefully you can see it. I know it's a little bit hard to see because the door is actually at an angle right now. So it's a, it's a little bit confusing. Um, oftentimes I would just open up the door on its own and work on it, but I would just wanna show um, you viewers the way that you can edit the part in the context of the assembly. 
So that being said, I'm going to set a dimension to be about 28 millimeters from the end, from that end sketch, so 28. I'm going to hit OK. And so with those dimensions, oh, there, there's one more thing we need. We need to select the origin and the center point and make them horizontal to each other. So now it's, it's fully defined. And so we can just exit. And just like we did with the other part, because of the fact that we were editing the base flange and we were creating a close profile inside the base flange, the feature updated immediately because there were no problems. SolidWorks understood that there was a, a close profile with another close profile inside of it and that it would update accordingly. So I'm going to exit out of here and you're going to see that our hole has propagated on our part. And so at this point I can come up here to insert components and I want to insert this, piece, this part. This is basically a lock cylinder. I'm going to place it and from here I can come up to mate as we would expect, hit concentric, click on the circle here, click on this circle, and I'm going to make these mates align to each other. I'm going to hit OK. And if I drag this out, oh, you're, you're going to see that there's a little bit of an issue here. The door um, is not constrained, so it's, it's flying around, and that's why my, my part is flying around. So to fix that, um, I'm just going to click on the door, come up to mate, and I'm going to lock it and I'm going to select this face to lock it to and that's going to uh, stop it from moving and, and being difficult to work with so uh, with that I'm going to just move this into place so I already have a concentric mate for this and I want to have one more mate so that I can place it uh, where I want it so I'm going to come back to mate click on this back face and click on this face and now they're mated together and so from here um, it's really quite simple I just need to go back to my mates and delete the lock that I've created so right click on it under the mates tab and just hit delete and so you can see that my door swings uh, open and closed. And if I decide to mate this face to the face of the box and close the box using a parallel constraint, which is automatically selected by SolidWorks, I can do a section view and you can look through the whole part or the, through the whole assembly and see that our lock is locking our sheet metal door to our sheet metal box and that's exactly what we want so there you have it we've added a couple simple features we didn't create any new features in the process other than the the louvers because all we had to do was add sketches to pre-existing features and so that's a very clean workflow to follow it it's not as good to add say an extrude cut when you can really just add a sketch to a base flange so that being said I hope you got a lot of value out of this um, tutorial and I'll see you in the next one